Manchester City 6, Manchester United 3. Eric Ten Hag loses his first derby game as Manchester United manager. Louis, where do you even start? Where do you want to start with that? <laughs> where do I want to start? Let me start with the only positive, and that's Martial. It was good to see him come back, score two goals. I liked his first goal, especially because that was a number nine type of goal. He was in the box. It was very frustrating watching this game, seeing that times when we had the ball on the wings, we didn't have anyone in the box because our striker, who was Rashford, wanted to drop deep, or we didn't have a midfielder running into the into the box to try and you know gamble on a cross or something. So it was good to see Martial back in his position, doing what he does best. Um, and he got two goals on that penalty. I mean, look at them techers, top corner, no keeper saving that. So that's the positive. I know you want to start with positives, but look, we can see the six goals at the Etihad. <laughs> that first half, 4 0 down again at half time for the second time this season. Yeah. What do you think Ten Hag's learned about his players today? Well, do you know what I was saying to the boys earlier? Like, <laughs> Ten Hag has learned that we're still not there because I think a lot of us were getting excited. Four wins on a row. Big wins as well. Arsenal, Liverpool, who are top teams, um, going away to Leicester. It's not easy. But then we just we got battered up. First half was disgusting. And he will say to the guys, do not ever have a half like that again where you, you're not trying, you're not giving 100%. Because they didn't look on it from the get-go. And um, yeah, he'll just let them know, Wagwan. And I wouldn't be surprised if we're here tomorrow in the papers that are oh, Ten Hag called them all in early and it all had to run around the whole of Manchester again. Talk to me about uh, Christian Eriksen. I mean, obviously we've been raving about him for weeks, saying how great he's been, had a great um, time on international duty, scored goals, possibly his worst game as United player today. Where do you think it went wrong for him? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think for definitely the first three goals, maybe the fourth, you could point him out and be like, oh, Eriksen's fault, he wasn't in the right position, or he's marking Haaland, which is just dumb. And I, I mean... Even if um, he's not the captain, he doesn't call the shots. You should be saying, you should be saying to McTominay or someone who's bigger, let's swap. Simple. That's what makes sense to me. But um, I think he was exposed today, but the whole midfield was exposed. And obviously where he's playing the deeper midfielder, you know, it was a tough game for him. Um, so I don't want to say nothing too bad because look, he's balled out for the last four games and he's still that same guy, but definitely the midfield got exposed and it was quite harsh on Ericsson today. Talk to me about Haaland, obviously going into the game, everyone was talking about how do we deal with him? How do we manage him? Clearly we didn't. He scored a hat-trick. He wasn't the only one to score a hat-trick as well. Phil Foden scores a hat-trick. But why didn't you think we were able to deal with him? Is it just because he's so good? Is it because we weren't defending well? Is it because we lacked aggression? Is it all of the above? Man, he's a goal scorer first and foremost. He's, you know, he's just a beast like... You can't really stop him. If if you stop Haaland, it's probably because he's having an off day, not because you're such a great defender, because he just needs a sniff of a chance and it's a goal, you know? And I believe he could do it in any team because he's just that guy, he's efficient, you know? And he's done it abroad, he's doing it here, does it for the national team. Um, again, United wasn't great. We got undone by great play. You can see that, that Man City are so well drilled. They know if De Bruyne is overlapping, um, I'm Haaland, I'm going to drop to the penalty spot because he's going to quit back. So they know what kind of moves they're going to make. And it makes it a lot easier. Um, as um, DJ is saying, there's so much more into their kind of um, rhythm and years of like strategies and the way Pep wants them to play. So they've been doing it for a while. But Haaland... Yeah, he's unstoppable. He scored, what, maybe 13 goals in eight games at the moment in the Premier League. I mean, you can talk about how far ahead they are, the nurse, and obviously their patterns of play are clearly miles ahead and their fluidity miles ahead. But conceding six goals, being 4-0 down at half time, what, where does that stem from? Does that stem from, you know, a group of players that maybe Tenag was beginning to trust, but now in a big occasion when the pressure is on, they just collapse? Is, is that another learning point? Oh, and I think you hit the nail on the head earlier. You just said about um, from the get-go, you could see there wasn't up for it. Um, pressure definitely got to them, which does um, surprise me, like, because they know, they've had a whole international break, knowing the next game is Man City. You would have expected these boys to be riled up, ready to go. Rashford didn't go on international, nor did Sancho, um, nor did Luke Shaw. So, you know, their man are fresh. Yeah, you would have expected them to be up for it, because usually this game at the Etihad, we come up with some surprise results. Um, we have done over the last five years, but yeah, it just clearly wasn't up for it and just not good enough at all. Do we need to be somewhat 
cautious though at the same time that granted it's the derby granted it's a really bad performance and it's a really disappointing result and a result we've got to have to live with now but it is still one game we've got a lot of games in uh, october to come i think we've got eight more in the next 28 days or something like that is it a case of having to put that now behind us because there's still plenty of games to play for sure. I mean, it's definitely going to get addressed in training. Um, I know they do a lot of video analysis, watching back on where they went wrong, so on and so forth. So there's so many things they could pick up on during that game, which went wrong. Um, but um, by Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah, you've got to move on. We've got Everton, um, we've got Chelsea this um, month. So we've got lots of big games coming up also. And at the end of the day, the way I see it, if we win our next six Premier League games, which isn't impossible, then you're forgetting about what happened on the 2nd of October. And we could be in a better position. We could be in the top four. And that's where we want to get to. So, yeah. And also, do we need to, again, kind of not reevaluate, but just maybe a reality check of not getting too far ahead of ourselves. You know, after winning four games in a row in the Premier mm. League, after spending what we spent in the summer and getting positive results against Arsenal, against Liverpool, maybe there was a, a false expectation of what we can achieve this season. Going into this season, it was top four, probably that fourth spot. Has today just cemented, actually, you know what? It's fourth. We need to get fourth and that's pretty much all we can do. I mean, as... Manchester United fans, it would make our life a lot easier if we, you know, don't get too carried away and focus on fourth. I think that's reasonable. Um, at the start of the season, probably wasn't even saying that, but because we've seen what Ten Hag can do, fourth is reasonable. Um, and it will be obviously a good battle between the teams that are battling for that position, but um, it's reasonable. But yeah, like most teams, when you get a few wins on the spin and you're playing some good football, everyone gets carried away. But um the level-headed players will realise and the manager will realise where we're at, what squad we've got, what's going on with Manchester United and they should be aiming for fourth and just keep that as their focus. Do you expect any changes then going forward? We thought this was the winning side. We thought this was the winning formula for Ten Hag. Some of those players now, they're expected to drop out and who'd you bring in? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would love some changes simply because we've got a big squad. Let's utilise it. Let's utilise it, especially where we've got Europa League football. We've got Carling Cup coming up. Let's utilise these players and see everyone chipping in and out. You know, I want us to be a team where it doesn't matter who you're playing because, you know, the system, Ten Hag's system, excuse me, you're just balling out. It doesn't matter who's in. Um, it would be nice to be like, oh, do you know what, Fran, you have a rest because we could bring in Lindelof or Maguire or even Wam Saka. That guy's been out in the cold. Do you know what I mean? Um, of course, these players have to be up to scratch and of a level, but um, definitely changes need to be made. Um, who? Well, I want to see Martial in the number nine position. That would bring Rashford to the left um, and maybe shake up that midfield a bit. Fred, I do like Fred. I like his energy and um, how he presses. So he would just be great addition to that team. There you go, Manchester City 6, Manchester United 3, the first game of many in October and it begins with a defeat.